I want to thank uh, Natalie for this intense uh, situation that you've created for us. Um, it's, it, is, it is absolutely intense. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, talk about setting the bar high, right? I mean, we're, we're looking for partners for our future iterations, but uh, don't be intimidated by, <laughs> by, by this. Uh, thank you so very, very much. Um, my work is usually on, on indigenous uh, contemporary art, and so I'm an, I'm an outsider, and I keep saying, I've been saying this for the last like three years, and I, I might have to stop with that excuse, but, uh, but it is an interesting position to claim or occupy, uh, right? It's a, it's a claim to a certain type of ignorance about the region that I think uh, it can either be a, a, a privilege or some kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, colonial gesture at the same time. Um, <clears throat> but given that position in terms of uh, my relationship to, to indigenous uh, arts and indigenous issues, uh, you know, one of the things that um, we often do in Indian country in terms of uh, these kinds of gatherings is to acknowledge, uh, you know, the original inhabitants of the land, right? Um, because uh, wherever you go, you're on a native land, right? Uh, and then, of course, you'd, you'd make that claim here, and there might be some, uh, here in the Cayman Islands, and there might be some resistance to that. Well, this place maybe had, hasn't always been inhabited. I mean, there are all these kinds of different stories about uh, the origins of the place. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this, the, this notion of the archive, uh, especially in relationship to the previous discussions about the time uh, of... Uh, the time of exhibition, right, whether it's a historical, contemporary, or um, the space of exhibition. You know, site specificity and, and the temporal, the spatial temporal specificity of things is particularly important when we think about the archive. And so I'm actually not going to say much, if anything, as an introduction. I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, ideas that sort of uh, drifted uh, through uh, um, um, <laughs> my chaotic little mind, but um, it, as, as things happened yesterday, uh, you know, I think uh, um, I was struck by the notion of the site specificity of uh, archives and other issues. So I'm just going to quickly go through this, and then what we're going to do is I'm not going to introduce the speakers. You all have bios. Uh, I want to just uh, have the opportunity for the presentations to happen, and then especially for a conversation to occur afterwards, because I think that's, that's the heart of our work uh, here, I think. Um, let's see. Okay, so with that, Eddie, please. Come, we go down there to take our ride. I left my PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, now um, let, let me just figure this out. Is that is that for is that for forward? Is that is that right? Is that yeah. forward? 
Okay, okay. Great, all right. Um, okay, let me see. It's um, 1.40. I'll speak for about 20 minutes or so and, um, and play some audio if there's enough time. <laughs> um, <laughs> great, okay. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to, well, as the, as the talk is tight, subtitled, I wanted to talk about some of the problems um, that, have, that I think have arisen alongside some of the progress in terms of um, it, 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 in terms of archiving of, Carib of Caribbean artists, artists' work. So um, let me just get straight into that. So I'm going to start with an image of a, of, a, of a gallery. I mean, it wasn't a large gallery, fairly small, but important gallery that closed down 25 years ago, or just under 25 years ago. It was in Finsbury Park, North London. And the gallery opened in 1983, well, actually, you can see the dates there. It opened in 1983, and it ran for about 10 years. Over that time, doing around about 60 or 70 exhibitions, the gallery came into existence at a time when um, exhibition opportunities for, um, um, for, uh, for certain artists were, few, were, were rare. It was the, 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 the sorts of artists who got to show in this space were not, were not the sorts of artists who frequently or easily got access to other, other kinds of exhibition spaces. So it was a specific kind of space um, uh, that uh, was, was, was instrumental in launching the careers of a number, a number of artists. And I just wanted to show you some documentation. This is the, the person who founded the gallery. Um, um, this, is a, this is an image of him from the, from, from the mid, mid 80s. And this was the catalogue for the first exhibition, Heart in Exile. And uh, that was a poster for the first exhibition. Uh, and this is a, this is a kind of a, um, an image from the opening, from the opening, um, uh, the opening activities um, of, of, of that first exhibition, Heart in, Ex Heart in Exile. So this was in, this was in sometime in 1983, was it maybe September, is that, did the date? Yeah, September 80, 83. Now I'm showing you these images for, uh, for a reason. I'm, sure I'm raising, raising the subject of the Black Art Gallery for a reason. And that is that um, in 2009, I think it was, yes, in 2009, I was setting about writing um, um, my first book. Um, sorry, this is a poster for the exhibition, a, a poster for an exhibition. Keith Piper had his first solo show in the gallery, as did a number of other artists. So this is a rare opportunity for artists to get substantial exhibition space for the work to exist on its, very much on its own terms. And oftentimes these exhibitions came with, with um, um, uh, 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 these sorts of publicity. Um, the, the, there were small catalogues, after, the, the, there were sometimes small catalogues and, and, and so on. So the, the documentation that, that, um, that was created or could, be, could often be created around exhibitions was extraordinarily important. So in 2009, I set about, set about doing some research on my, my first book. Um, and I wanted to research, I wanted to access, or I wanted to find out about this 10 years of activity at the Black Art Gallery. You know, what happened, what, uh, how can we read these shows that take place between 83 and 93? What are the reasons for the gallery falling apart? Um, what were the reasons for the gallery to be established in the first place? Of course, I had an idea about these things, but I wanted to embellish the ideas that I had um, with, with archival documents. Now, what I didn't mention, I should have mentioned it, but I'll mention it now, the, the building that the gallery was in uh, was owned by Islington Council. Islington one of the, count, one of the 32 councils. Um, um, and um, Islington... Islington owned the building and they funded the gallery, Islington County Council funded the gallery. So I'm, I'm thinking, or I'm hoping that there's going to be some, um, some archive that I can access in terms of reading, rereading the activities of the gallery. So I, I emailed this place, Islington History Centre, um, um, you know, to ask them 
to ask them, you know, what holdings they might have. And I, I, I took a screenshot. I don't know if you can read it. You, you, you probably can't read it, but, but in the screenshot, I, I ask, you know, I say, um, I'm trying to find out what happened to the archive material to the Back Art Gallery that was um, um, in Seven Sisters Road, so on and so forth. Um, so it's a kind of a general um, inquiry about, about what happened to this, to the, to all, to the evidence of the gallery's existence. Bearing in mind, the History Centre at Islington is, a, is in many ways a key point, a key or obvious place to start. Anyway, they emailed me back and saying, saying they hadn't got a clue what I was talking about, you know, so on and so forth. No, no items exist, exist um, in their holdings, and they kind of directed me to somewhere else, you know. Of course, it's a fool's errand to start this wild goose chase, you know, um, 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 when the principal place in Islington um, 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 that should have some evidence of the gallery's existence um, um, uh, has nothing. So um, basically, when the gallery closed, 10 years of archive, archive um, exhibition catalogues, posters, ephemera, reviews, and whatever, it, it all gets junked. It all gets thrown into a, into a dumpster, and that's the end of that. So within Britain, and of course, we can extrapolate this to other places, perhaps, there's this, this dominant sense that the activities of black people are, are, deemed, are deemed of lesser or indeed no value um, 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 as, as, as set against the activities of, of other people. So like, why, would the, why would anybody keep this stuff? I mean, there's a kind of a logic, you know, in the dominant culture to this stuff just being junked this stuff to be thrown away because there's a presumption that what black people do is of lesser consequence or is of lesser value than what others do. Um, so this is, a, this is a formidable problem of, of, um, of, of the historian who would, who would see to, to fashion some kind of credible history of the activities of certain artists. Um, I came up, so when I was researching uh, my next book, I, I, came, uh, I came across, ju just quite by chance, uh, this, uh, this issue, th th sorry, this, an article in this magazine. Um, and when, I, when one comes across this kind of item, this, this information about artists who were existing, operating in the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, actually, let's stick with the 70s. The question of where are they now? What are they doing now? Um, it's a question that comes up immediately. So what happened to this guy? Is he still, is he still working? Has he, ha has he died? Has he left a body of material somewhere? We don't know the answers to these questions. I mean, uh, uh, and this speaks of one of the direct problems that we have, that we have um, when we're looking at, when we, want to, want, when we want to return to, to revisit or to create stories around these artists in that the space between, or the time between product, productivity or production and erasure is extraordinarily brief. This is not, this is not hundreds of years, this is not tens of years. This, this in many ways can be, it can be counted in kind of almost, in almost periods of, of, say, of say three or four or five years. So think about it. Um, Activities that happened in the 80s in Britain, in London and elsewhere, it's extraordinarily difficult to find information about, about these activities, more so the 70s, 60s, and so on and so forth. One, truthfully, one, one would, all, would also have um, major trouble um, in terms of constructing credible stories around what happened in, the, in, the, in this century, in the, the early part of this century, and in, and um, um, as I say, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So, um, as I say, there's the point between activity and Eurasia is extraordinarily brief. Um, in some respects, um, when one finds um, these kinds of items, they, they, they do start to become very important because, um, be, because what they speak of is it's a kind of evidence. I mean, evidence is hugely important because, in lots of respects, one has to furnish evidence as to one's existence. I mean, if one does not furnish evidence, 
as to one's existence, it means that one, one does not exist. I mean, in, 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 our, in, in our world terms. So this, this thing about evidence is golden. It's extraordinarily important to kind of identify artifacts or items from history that one can say, here is the evidence of what certain artists were doing. Um, I mean, we heard earlier some, something about Moody and his, um, his presence in, in maybe um, in, the, in the, the Tate's thinking um, um, at the present, at, in, recent, in recent decades. Um, but if one reads a text like this, one, in some respects, one is reading it out of context because the text would need to properly be contextualized or this, the ways in which Moody is, Moody, Moody is posthumously embraced needs to be contextualized within this sort of text that this comes out in, in the 50s. So why is it, I mean, Moody, born in 1900, died in 1984. So why is it that from the 30s and 40s, 50s onwards, Moody, in effect, works as a peripheral figure until several, several decades after his death? Um, what accounts for these kind of undulating fortunes or undulating profiles of certain people? In some respects, if, uh, unless, we, unless we ask ourselves and tackle these issues, then um, we're looking at something like this out of context. Um, Moody, clearly, I mean, I spoke of him as, I mean, in some, some respects, we can speak of him as a, as a figure who was marginalized in the, in the British art world. But, but there, were, there were safe homes, there were, there were homes that his work, his work, his work was uh, kind of existed in. Um, so, but these homes are in many respects, uh, they're marginal spaces, they're peripheral spaces, if I can use those, those terms. Um, um, I'm not, I mean, this is an aside in some respects, but I'm not, a, I'm, not, um, I'm not keen on posthumous, the posthumous embrace of artists. Um, I believe that the time to, to, to acknowledge artists is when they're living and breathing and working. I mean, I believe that when they're dead, they're just dead. Um, um, so um, I'm not somebody who puts a lot of faith or puts a lot of store in, in the posthumous attention that's being paid to people like Aubrey Williams and Moody and, 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 so, and so on. Um, to be aware, uh, there's, I think it's very important, it's extraordinarily so, important for us to be aware of history in terms of the activities that predate our present time. And one notices in Caribbean art exhibitions um, that they're always presented as being new. They're always presented as being... They're, they're never presented in terms of what's happened previously. Um, um, and even this exhibition made no mention of, of the sorts of exhibitions that, that, that took place of Jamaican art from the, from the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, and into the 90s. Um, so what that, what that means is that we're always at some kind of skewed year zero um, um, we're not able to move forward in any kind of substantial way because we're always, the wheel is always being reinvented because the work of certain artists is always being presented as, as, as new. Um, um, um. Whereas if we read Caribbean art in terms of the history of exhibitions of Caribbean art in Britain, we can get a much more strong, a stronger sense of the, of the skewed and warped ways in which the art world works in terms of certain artists. Um, this thing about Jamaican art or Caribbean, or, or, or w w w work from other parts of the Caribbean um, surfacing every 10, 15, 20 years as a kind of a new initiative, these are, these are very, prob this is a very problematic way um, um, in, which in which certain artists' work is constructed. Um, um, to say, there are pathologies that come out of these exhibitions, that that we could, that and these these um, pathologies that that emerge on a kind of a fairly regular basis. I mean, 
Um, I think it's probably going to be, in terms of Jamaican Pulse, I mean, we're probably looking at the next exhibition of Caribbean arts on this scale probably, probably about 10 or 15 years' time. But it, but it will make no mention of this kind of exhibition and all the previous exhibitions, which is, which is it's quite twisted in lots of respects. And, and of course, it's counter, it's counter to any ideas of building any kind of credible history. Um, I think that might be the last, last of the, the exhibition catalogues that I've assembled, just to make the point. Um, um, there's always stirrings about, there's always talk about a Caribbean art, art exhibition, a major Caribbean art exhibition. Um, certainly the last one, <laughs> the last, uh, last exhibition that functioned uh, in, in kind of a broad, broad sense was, was um, 30, 30 years ago. I'm not saying that these exhibitions are good or, or, or whatever. Um, clearly, there's, some, there's a problematic aspect to these kind of trending, kind of roadshow, broad-based exhibitions. But uh, in some respects, they, they, um, it's, the, it's, the, the, it's the, the skewed presence of, of a certain artists, which is punctuated by 10, 20, 30 years of absence, that makes um, notions of Caribbean art very kind of, very kind of twisted. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, which I, I think is very important, is this idea that, about the archive, because in some respects, who owns the archive owns history. Um, and um, so the places here um, is an exhibition that, that supposedly looked at um, uh, looked at the work of black artists in Britain in the 1980s, but there was one artist who took a, um, a, um, a, a third of the exhibition, and there were many artists who were absent from the exhibition. And so we can easily think that we can easily think that um, in terms of the artists who were absent, if they'd been approached for their personal archives, then the archive would there would would henceforth be something else. Um, so the archive is not a neutral thing. It's not a disinterested um, notion. The archive is a very, very skewed notion that serves the purposes of those who own the archive. And I think that's a very important point for us to, to bear in mind. Um, um, in terms of looking at histories of, of artist practice, I think we oftentimes need to look at the wider ways in which the wider context in which artists make work. I don't believe that, well, it's, clear, it's clearly self-evident that artists don't make work in isolation. They make, they make work in relation to, to the times at which, in which, they, in which they, they live and all the kind of amazing, wonderful, challenging things that happen to people um, in the course of their lifetimes. So I don't believe that we can look at at um, what's happening, in the, uh, it, w what's happening in, in the, the work of certain artists in the 1970s without recourse to Rastafari and, and lots of other, lots of other, uh, other things that, that are happening w with a certain intensity in the 1970s. Um, and it's through, it's through these wider considerations that we can think or that we can more appreciate, um, we can more appreciate um, 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 some of these sub, um, um, some of these histories. So I just wanted to wrap up. I, I think I'm I'm out of time more or less. But I wanted to wrap up with with this with a reference to to some of this broader history that I'm I'm speaking of because Linda Gwesa Johnson, um, it's phenomenally impo important in for for example in looking at the work of black artists emerging in the 19, in the 1980s. We can't do so without looking at. Lyndon Quasar Johnson and his extraordinary poetry. Um, Lyndon Quasar Johnson is um, this poet who, um, whose basis, basis is extraordinary po poetry um, in the experiencing, sorry, in the experiences of black people in Britain, which he thinks Britain has failed black people. Britain has not been a kind of a generous home, has not been a welcoming home, um, and out of this kind of countercultural spaces, his poetry emerges, and he uses English in 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 very very challenging ways, or ch ways that challenge the dominant uses of English, 
This is not Radio 4 English. This is not Queen's English. This is not NPR English. This is a different kind of English. But it is, it is, it's English. I mean, it's not, this, is not, uh, this is not broken English. This is not faulty English. This is as English as, any, as, as anybody else is English. And, and I want you to play... Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of trying to switch, switch um, media. So let's... let's <laughs> Um, I, I want to try, uh, try, and, uh, try and show those lyrics while, while the song is playing, so if you can pull that on, um, you'll get a sense of, of Linda Cressy Johnson's use of English. Come, we go down there. We take a ride down there. Come, we go down there. The power down there. In order to get deep understandings of, of, of art and other, other, other aspects of visual culture, we, we, need to, or we oftentimes need to see things in the round. We need to draw in different elements. And I think, in terms of my own research, my own work, drawing in music has been extraordinarily important uh, uh, because it's, the, it, it's been a faithful means at different times in history by which I can further open up further understand um, um, the, the work of artists of the African diaspora, what's, what's going on in their, in their practice. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm out of time, so I'll stop there. Thank you. <laughs> 